How's it going everybody? This is Dave LeClaire with MakeUseOf.com and today we are here to review the Higher X Shuai Robot Vacuum. We're going to go over its features, we're going to go over its specifications, we're going to look at how well it functions in your everyday life, and we are going to talk about whether the $250 robot is worth taking into your home. So keep watching the review and let's find out together. Thank you Geek Buying, by the way for providing us with this review unit. So before we talk about living with the robot and how it's actually going to function in your day-to-day -day life, let's take a quick look at its specs. Starting with the battery, you're going to get a 2200 mAh lithium-ion battery that is, should last about two hours depending on where you're using it. It's going to be a little less on carpet, a little more on hardwood. I found that in my testing it did average somewhere between an hour and 45 minutes and two hours, but I also have slightly higher than average soil leveling due to a shedding dog. It also has five different cleaning parts. They call it a five-step cleaning system. So it sweeps, it rolls, it sucks because it's a vacuum. It has flaps that dig up the dirt a little bit and it mops for your hardwood floor type situation. It's all controlled through the application on your phone. You can also view the two megapixel camera through the application on your phone so you can actually see what it sees. And you also pick your cleaning mode through the app on the phone. So there's the Z-shaped mode that is your standard run back and forth, kind of get everywhere. There's the edge mode that goes around the edge of your house, hence the name edge mode. And there's spot mode where you actually put the vacuum in a specific place and you move it around to where you need it. As far as the suction and the airflow goes, it's uh, 10,000 rotations per minute, which is pretty decent. That's going to suck up most of your soil. It's not going to get deep, deep into a carpets, but you need to get a much more expensive deep cleaning vacuum to really do that anyway. It can go up 15 degrees of angle, so if you have any type of ramp in your house, it will be able to go up them as long as they're not too steep. Any steeper and it'll get a floor detect error, and then you'll have to go and help it. It is also quite quiet, around 65 decibels, and I found that I was able to comfortably watch TV with the vacuum working, and it didn't really bother me in the slightest. Obviously it has an array of sensors. There's four ground detection sensors, two mechanical anti-collision sensors that actually give on the front when it bumps off of a wall. It has five electronic collision sensors that actually detect any type of impact before it reaches the wall. And it also has sensors that tell you if the dust bin is full. It has infrared receiving sensors that help it find its charging base. So it has all that stuff to make sure that it doesn't crash into stuff. It also has a 0.35 liter dust bin, which is enough I found to, even with my Shetty dog, to clean up both floors of my house without having to empty it. I have a 1200 square foot condominium. So if you have not a, if you don't have a dog that sheds everywhere, you could probably clean your house twice without even needing to empty it. And the unit itself is a decent size. It's 95 millimeters wide, 32 millimeters tall. It's a circle and it weighs 2.9 kilograms, so it's not overly heavy. I can easily lift it with one hand without any problem. So as far as the actual specs go, it's pretty comparable with most models in this price range. Uh, you can get an iLife model that is, is slightly better specs than this one, but not, not a big difference. When you go over to the Roomba side of things, you will find more features, more specs, more control, but you're also gonna pay like 500 bucks. So the trade-off here is that this retails for $250 and you can often get it less from Geek Buying. So you can find it for less than its full retail of $250 over there depending on how long you're willing to wait to ship. So as far as the specs go, you're going to find pretty solid results here. Everything is about where you would expect it to be in the lower mid-end robotic vacuum range. So now that we got the nitty-gritty numbers out of the way, let's talk about actually living with this robot. Because that's really what you're doing. You're coexisting with a robot. Now, I did have some issues in my specific situation. First of all, on carpet, I found that it got stuck all the time. It would wrap around the rubber, the rubber feet that pick up the dirt. And I had to end up taking that piece off. And then I ended up getting better results. Your mileage may vary there if you don't have a dog with long fur that sheds. It should get over your carpets a little bit better and have less errors, but that's something you're going to have to experiment with. On the hardwood floors, I didn't have any problem with it getting stuck or errors, but what I did have an issue with was around my electronic drum set, it would frequently ride up onto the bass pedal or the hi-hat pedal, and it would have an issue and say floor detect error, and I'd have to go manually move it. It would also get stuck occasionally under my TV stand, which was just the right height for it to fit under, but once it got under there, where the weight of the TV is and it bowed slightly, it would get stuck. 
And the only way to stop that is to manually put something in front of it every time I want to vacuum. So what I ended up having to do was I had to do my vacuuming while I'm home. My plan was originally to let it go overnight, get up in the morning and voila, my floors are clean. I end up having to do it when I'm home just in case it gets stuck, which it does almost every time in my experience. But it's still a lot easier than actually vacuuming myself and seeing as I'm pretty lazy, I'm really not too disappointed that every now and then I may have to go over to it and hit the button or move it off of my bass pedal. Also, most people don't have electronic drum sets in their dining room. And if you don't, and you just have normal furniture, you should find that it doesn't get stuck very often, as long as you have the stuff that's not a weird height. Unfortunately, unlike the more expensive Roomba models where you can set invisible walls and tell it not to go to a certain area, this does not offer that. So you have to set up physical walls to prevent it from going somewhere. So for me, I ended up just putting a chair in front of the electronic drum set and it keeps it away from it. I don't really have a good solution for the TV stand. I just have to kind of deal with it. Now, as far as the actual cleaning goes, I found that it did do a pretty good job, especially on wood floors. I smashed up a bunch of Cheez-Its, threw a pile of dog fur, which my dog is more than happy to create with one quick swipe of his brush. And it sucked it all up, left it quite clean. On the carpet, I wasn't quite as pleased with the cleaning results of a quick spot cleaning with smashed up Cheez-Its. And I would want to go over that with my other vacuum, my hand vacuum, because I'm not going to leave the crumbs there. They're, they're mostly gone, but deep in the carpet, there is a little bit of crumbs that remained. And I don't really want bugs to be eating Cheez-Its off my carpets. No free meals here at Casa de Dave. So overall, I got to say living with it, I'm happy with it for the most part. It does have some flaws. It's not perfect, but it's also quite a bit cheaper than most robot vacuums on the market. So that's the trade-off that you're gonna find. And that's a trade-off that you need to decide if it's something you can live with or not. And so that brings us to the big question. Should you buy this robot vacuum cleaner? Is it the right one for you? Should you bring it into your house? I would say if you can get it for a good enough price, maybe sub $200, it's worth picking up at the $250 price range. Unfortunately, there are better models out there that have less issues with getting stuck and less errors that you can do more autonomously as we have reviewed with the iLife models here at Make Use Of before. However, if you can get it for cheap enough, it's definitely worth picking up. It does have some cool features. Being able to mess with your dog with the camera and the microphone on the phone is pretty fun. But it does clean well and it is pretty cheap compared to you know the iRobot models that are out there that are far more expensive. So it is worth picking up if you can get it for a good enough price. Also, we would like to again say thank you to Geek Buying for providing us with our test model. And make sure to like and subscribe to make use of and catch all of our video reviews and other cool stuff that we put out. And we will see you guys next time.